Okay, was there a challenge that you were faced with? No. Oh, okay. There was a dilemma of like, do you really want them where I'm gonna put them? Because once I put them, they're put. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Can you guys see this situation? Look at this. Somebody, they did this last year too. And oh, it irked me to no end. Coming out here, pulling up all my onions. Obviously they do it for fun and to absolutely tick me off. It's so very rude. I've done this now probably three times. This is the worst because I was out of town last weekend. But look, I have this whole pile that was all right here, thrown over here in the tomato row. If you guys know what critter does this, let me know what kind of shotgun I need to kill him. I came out here with that weekend when you were gone and put them all back in once oh already. Oh my gosh. It's very, very rude. We think our hypothesis is that it's birds. And the birds come along and they grab them and they pull them out to Thinking see if they're, they're good to eat. Like them to eat, yeah. Oh, so not nice. That's all I got to say about it. So come back through, plant them all again. And, oh, I don't mean to complain on camera, but guys, this is like, my garden is not perfect either. And I deal with stuff and, oh my goodness, this is why you have to come out to your garden and check it regularly because you just never know what's, what somebody or Mother Nature's gonna do when you're not looking. I think we need to get some like streamers on sticks and like that flutter around to see if that helps. Do you remember how high off the ground we went last year? Is that 18 yeah, inches? 18. 16, yeah. 18's way up here. Yeah, but they're, they'll be strong enough to start at 18 inches. They're probably already 18 yeah. inches. Yeah. Well, I'm going <laughs> to bury them quite a bit. Yeah, I know. They always that, it's always fun when you first plant them and we get that good first rain and they just like, yeah. it's like you can just watch them grow. Birds are loud today, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Twitter painted. I'm not happy with them right now, though. <laughs> it's probably the ones that ripped out the onions. Mm -hmm. They're mocking you. So all we're using is these little fence clips. You get them at like Tractor Supply, Rural King, all those kinds of places. And anytime we do something like this, people always ask, what's that tool? All it is is a little piece of metal with some three holes in it. I put some red duct tape on it. So if I drop it on the ground, it's easier to see. And it's just, its sole purpose is for wrapping these wires around these T-posts. I think you get them at the same place, Tractor Supply, Rural King, Family Farm and Home, and they cost like $3 or something. It's really silly, but it works quite well. They kind of just go on like this. Grab a hold of it and wrap it around. That's all there is to it. They're kind of a pain to take off if you want to try to take them off and salvage them to reuse them. 
not very easy to do. I threw away the ones from last year and just use the new ones this year. Well, okay. <laughs> I'll put another one down below to hold it. Right. I got it from here. Okay. So I don't think we even said what we're doing and we are putting up the tomato trellises. So if you're new here, welcome. My name's Rachel. I don't always complain in my garden, <laughs> but I had been pushed to the limit today. Vandalism. Yes. And uh, so last year we used these cattle panels on T-posts for our tomato trellises for the first time. In the past, I just used individual tree stakes or bamboo stakes, things like that. <clears throat> and no matter what, some of them are going to get blown down in the wind or toppled over just by the weight of the tomato plant itself. This is an amazing solution. We learned about it from Sarah and Kevin over at Living Traditions, and it is the way to go for high intensity, high yielding tomato production. I can plant my tomatoes about every 18 inches and then they just grow vertically. And I do try to keep them somewhat single stemmed, maybe double stemmed on a couple of them if they look like they can handle it. And I love them. So Todd never likes the job because it <laughs> is uh, probably the most manually intensive trellis build each year. But um, once it's done, it stays in all year long. I do rotation uh, gardening. I know I like get asked that question a lot. And I do. Um, not everything, but things that can have root type pest. So tomatoes can have, I got distracted. I just saw another onion plant that I missed. Where'd it go? Oh, I lost them. Oh, here he is. Tomatoes can have a um, common root pest, uh, whether it's root fungus or um, root neem, the bad, um, Gosh, I'm not going to I'm not going to try to say the name of it because I'm not super intelligent about all that stuff, but there are common pests that can live in the soil from infected tomato plants. Oh, like blight. I know that for a fact. If you haven't researched a blight and you're new to gardening, start researching it now in case it's something that comes up in your gardening this year. You know how to deal with it. I'm just gonna give you a tip. You need to get it out of your garden right away. Never mulch with anything with blight that has been in the leaves. Um, some people say you can compost it. I typically will just burn it. Uh, potatoes are another thing. Potatoes can have potato blight. I suffered with a little potato blight for the first time last year. So I moved my potatoes this year and I won't grow potatoes again in that soil um, for a few years. Similarly to tomatoes, if you suffer with blight, you might want to really amend that soil really well and don't grow the same crop in it for a while. Um, now, Things like carrots, unless you deal with like carrot maggot or carrot fly, um, you know, anything that's really eating the roots, I haven't dealt with that too bad myself. So I will grow carrots in the same location a couple years in a row. And onions, similarly, I will grow onions. I grew onions here last year. I'm growing onions here again. And I can get away with that. And you can get away with it too if you just amend your soil every single year. So I amend my soil every fall and every winter, put nutrients back into the soil that the plants took. And a lot of times that's what rotational gardening is all about, is a plant is sucking what it needs to grow out of the soil. So the soil gets depleted from the minerals and nutrients that that plant needed. Rotational gardening is a practice put in place because in the old days, farmers might not have been amending their soils yearly. And so they had to rotate their crops. Um, but if you're doing that on a small scale every single year, you really don't have to worry with that too much. You just need to keep in mind fungus, pest management, bacteria management, things like that. So I came out with every intention. It's late, the sun's going down. Pocket full of beets and carrots to plant but Todd was doing this project and I saw the disaster of my onions. So that took precedent. So probably tomorrow we'll get out here and we'll plant our beets and carrots. I'll bring you guys along for that. Anything else you wanna say, babe? Um, 
How big is all of this? Um, the cattle panels, we raise them up 18 inches from the ground so the tomatoes have plenty of room to grow. We, we use non-standard T-posts. We use seven foot T-posts for this so that they're extra tall. And then the width of the, the length, I guess one would say, of the entire thing is a full 16 foot cattle panel and then half of a cattle panel. So about 20, 23, 24 feet or so. That's a lot of row. tomatoes. Do How the many math. did we plant yeah, last year in, on these? I don't remember. Like 30? 30, 30, 32 maybe. 32? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love the process. I love the trellis solution. And last year I bought these little plastic clips. They didn't hold up super well if you followed them. I have a handful of them. Not a handful. A good amount that didn't break. Um, I'll continue to use those. But I really like the Velcro tape. Todd fusses at me because he finds Velcro tape everywhere, like in the laundry and like places it shouldn't be. But um, I really like the Velcro tape, so I'm probably going to go back to that myself. And you can find that really cheaply at like the dollar store. And plus, the Velcro tape glows. If you come out here with a UV flashlight looking for hornworm tomatoes. Hornworm tomatoes? Hornworm, hornworm, hornworms on your tomato plants. On your tomato plants. That Velcro <laughs> tape that you bought glows exactly like a hornworm. It worm. does. It does. So we came out here the first night looking for those worms, and we're like, Rachel, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just it was my just Velcro, that tape. Velcro tape. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's good to be back in the garden. Um, sorry I haven't been out here as much, but hey, it's still early. We're still dealing with some cold weather. Um, I've got flip-flops on, but believe me, my toes are freezing. But once it gets to a certain um, date on the calendar, no matter how cold it is, I refuse to wear socks anymore, and I try to refuse to wear a jacket to force summer to come on in. So I'll see you guys on the next video, and thanks for coming out in the garden with us. Yes.